Today we're going to talk about section 14.8. So first we're going to just talk about what is a salt. Well, a salt is basically an ionic compound. So in water we know a salt dissociates or breaks up into its ions. And also, under certain conditions, ions can also behave as either acids or bases. And so we're going to look at some of those situations. So first let's look at salts that produce neutral solutions. So these would be salts that consist of cations. Remember cations are the positive part. Cations of strong bases and anions of strong acids will have no effect on the H plus concentration when they are dissolved in water. And so this would involve aqueous solutions of KCl, NaCl, and KNO3. Strong bases because remember, strong acids are HCl, H2SO4, HClO4, and HNO3. And strong bases are the hydroxides, remember those are OH ions, of groups 1A and 2A. So let's look at salts that produce basic solutions. So for any salt whose cation has neutral properties, doesn't affect the concentration, and whose anion is the conjugate base of a weak acid, the aqueous solution will be basic. Because remember, conjugate bases of weak acids are relatively strong, and so they're going to make the solution basic. So let's look at an example. Okay, we have an aqueous solution of sodium acetate. So here's our Na plus and our C2H3O2 minus. Well, Na plus has no acidic or basic properties, so it's not going to affect the concentration at all, whereas C2H3O2 when minus is the conjugate base of the weak acid acetic acid, HC2H3O2. And so this anion is a strong conjugate base. And the third contributor, H2O, is weakly amphoteric. So because H2O is not very strong, the pH is going to be determined by the strong conjugate base, which is the C2H3O2 minus ion. And it's going to react with the H plus donor, in this case, the water. And so we get our reaction of, here's the acetate ion plus liquid water producing acetic acid and the OH minus. So here's our OH minus that's causing our solution to be basic. So we can write a Kb value uh, for this ion as the HC2H3O2 and the OH divided by C2H3O2. Remember, we're not including water because it's a liquid. We can also write the Ka value for the acid, okay, if we broke that apart, into H plus C2H3O2 and then the acid at the bottom. And so what happens is if we put these two, the Kb and the Ka together, if we multiply them, you can see that the concentration of the acid is going to cancel, as well as the concentration of the ion. And that just leaves us with the OH- minus concentration and the H plus concentration. And so multiplying these two together is equal to multiplying the Ka times the Kb, and we know that H plus times OH- minus is equal to Kw. So this holds true for any weak acid and its conjugate base. And so we can use this important relationship to solve for several different values. So let's, use, let's look at an example. And we want to calculate the pH of a 0.3 molar NaF solution. And they give us the Ka value for hydrofluoric acid. Okay, we know that our major contributing species are Na+, F-, and water. Because this salt, we know, is going to dissociate into its ions. That's why we're listing them both. And so we know that hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid. And so this means that F- is our strong conjugate base. Okay, and so it is going to determine our OH concentrations. And so we can write our reaction as F minus plus H2O produces our HF and the OH minus. And so we know that the case of B value in this case is equal to the HF concentration times the OH minus concentration divided by the fluorine concentration because we're not including water because it's a liquid. Okay, we can use the relationship we talked about previously to solve for K sub B. We know that K sub B is equal to K sub W over K sub A. And we know K sub W is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. And we were given K sub A in this problem as equal to 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4. And so that gives, oops, not negative 14, negative 4. So that gives us a case of B value of 1.4 times 10 to the negative 11. Okay, and so now let's do our ICE table. 
we know initially we have 0.3 moles or molar of the fluorine ion. We're not including water because it's a liquid. And this is zero, and we're saying our OH concentration is also approximately zero. So we have minus x plus x plus x. And so our equilibrium is 0.3 minus x, x, and x. And so we can substitute that into our case of B expression. Our HF is x, our OH minus is x, and our fluorine ion is 0.3 minus x. We can make the assumption that 0.3 minus x is equal to 0.3, and so we get x squared over 0.3. We know our case of B value is our 1.4 times 10 to the negative 11, and so that gives us an x value of 2 times 10 to the negative 6. If we check our approximation, we know that this value is less than 0.3% of 0.3 and so our approximation is valid and so this means that our OH concentration is equal to X which is equal to 2 times 10 to the negative 6 and so we can find the POH which is equal to the negative log of the OH concentration and that is equal to our 2 5.69. Now they wanted pH so we know that pH is equal to 14 minus the POH and so that's equal to 14 minus 5.69, which gives us 8 point, a pH of 8.31. And so remember, the closer that the pH is to 14, the more basic the solution is. So this is proving what we said before. We've got a basic solution. Okay, so let's look at base strength of aqueous solutions. We've got HCN plus H2O goes to our hydronium ion plus Cn minus, and the Ka value for that is 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10. Well, we know that HCN is a weak acid, so this must mean that the cyanide ion is a strong conjugate base. And so if we take the cyanide ion and react it with water, we produce HCN and the OH minus uh, ion. And so if we solve for the Kb value, we get 1.6 times 10 to the negative 5. And just on a side note, we also know that HCN is a weak acid because of this Ka value. It's very small. Okay, well, we've also got a small value for our Cn minus. And so this tells us, well, that seems like Cn minus would be a weak base, which is the opposite of what, you know, what we just observed from the fact that HCN is a weak acid. And so the reason that we're seeing this is because the cyanide ion is competing with the OH minus ion for H pluses in this second reaction versus competing with water for H pluses. And so OH is going to be stronger than CN minus, which is stronger than H2O. And so our CN minus is kind of in the middle there. Let's look at salts that produce acidic solutions. Okay, these are salts in which the anion is not a base and the cation is the conjugate acid of a weak base. And so this will produce an acidic solution. So if we have NH4Cl in water, we know salts dissociate, and so this one becomes NH4 plus and Cl minus. Well, the NH4 plus is going to behave as a weak acid. And so we've got NH4 plus reacting to produce you know, NH3 and the H plus ion. The Cl minus doesn't affect the pH because it has no affinity for H plus in water. So let's look at an example of this. We want to calculate the pH of a 0.1 molar NH4Cl solution. And it gives us the Kb value for NH3 as 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So we know that our species, our major contributing species, are NH4 plus, Cl minus, and H2O. And we know that um, NH4 plus can, and H2O can both produce um, H plus ions. So we want to know which one is going to be more dominant. So let's look at the NH4 plus. So this dissociates to produce our NH3 and our H plus. Okay, we know that since this is a weak acid, that we want a Ka value, and the Ka is equal to K sub W over K sub B, and so we have 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Divided by our case of B get value given for NH3, which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And so that gives us a Ka value of 
times 10 and the negative 10. Well, this is bigger than our case of W, and so we know that the NH4 plus is our dominant species. So we can also write a Ka based on our reaction of NH3 times H plus divided by our NH4 plus. So now let's do an ICE table. And so we know we're starting with 0.1. And we know we have 0 and H3, and we're going to say approximately 0 over H plus. So we have minus X plus X plus X, and so we get 0.1 minus X, X and X. So let's substitute that into our equilibrium expression. We have X at top times X for the H plus over 0.1 minus X, and we're going to make the assumption that 0.1 minus X is equal to 0.1. And we know that our Ka value from above is 5.6. Times 10 to the negative 10. Zero. Oh. Okay, so that gives us an x value of 7.5 times 10 to the negative 6. And so if we check our approximation, this 7.5 times 10 to the negative 6 is less than 5% of 0.1. So we're good there. So now we want to find the pH. So we knew our H plus is equal to x, which is equal to 7.5 times 10 to the negative 6. And so our pH is equal to negative log of H plus which is equal to 5.13. And so anything below 7 is an acidic solution. So there you go. Okay, we can also have salts that contain a highly charged metal ion, and they will also produce an acidic solution. And so, for example, we have AlCl3. If you dissolve it in water, you're going to produce Al and then uh, 6H2O, so a total of a 3+. plus. And this is a weak acid. And so the, high char the reason that this happens is because the high charge on the metal, so Al3 plus is a highly charged metal, it polarizes those OH bonds in the water molecules, making them more acidic than just a free water molecule. And so it makes an acidic solution. And so the higher the charge on the metal ion, the stronger the acidity of the hydrated ion. Okay, well, what we've been talking about so far are salts that either have you know, one, a cation anion is, doesn't affect at all, and the other one is either acidic or basic. Well, sometimes both of your cation and your anion are going to affect the pH of the solution. And so, for example, if we look at NH4C2H3O2, um, NH4 comes from, you know, is going to be acidic, and C2H3O2 is a conjugate base, and so they're both going to affect the pH. And if we try to calculate this, it can become quite complicated. And so what we do then is just make comparisons. So we compare the Ka value of the acidic ion with the case of B value of the basic ion. And, you know, if Ka is greater than Kb, it's acidic. If Kb is greater than Ka, it's basic. And if they're equal, it's neutral. So let's look at a few examples. So if we look at the first one, which is NH4C2H02, this has a Ka value of 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. And C2H3O2 has a case of B value of 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. And so because they are equal, this is a neutral solution. Okay, if we look at NH4CN, well, we already know NH4 has a case of A of 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. Well, to find the case of B value of the CN minus ion, we need to uh, look at the HCN. So we know case of B is equal to case of W over the Ka, and this is for the acetic acid, and so we know that if we solve for that, and you can find the case of A of HCN, this is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 5, so since case of B is greater than case of A, this is basic. Okay, let's look at our third one. Okay, we have Al2, SO4, 3. Okay, well, the ion from the aluminum is our Al, H2O, 6, 3 plus. And that has a case of A of 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. And for SO4, that comes from the second dissociation step of H2SO4. And so to solve for that case of B, it's case of W over the case of A of H2SO4. And that's actually the case of A2 because that second step produces the SO4. And so if you plug those values in, you get 8.3 times 10 to the negative 13. So here, since case of A is greater than case of B, this solution is acidic.